the end of this tutorial, you'll have a particle explosion effect just like this one. So, let's get started. Now, I already have a basic scene set up that has a main node with a button. Basically, I want an explosion to appear on screen anytime I click this button. I already have its press signal connected to the main script, as you can see here. So first off, go ahead and make a new scene with a root particles 2D node. And don't forget to save and name your scene as well. I'm naming mine Explosion, but name yours whatever you want. Now obviously this node isn't emitting any particles at the moment, so let's go ahead and fix that. Head to the Process Material tab, and then add a new particles material. Godot's particle system actually has a really easy way of doing explosions, which is aptly named the explosiveness property. So go ahead and turn this all the way up to 1. Unfortunately, uh, it's not quite as simple as just that, as you can tell from these depressing particles that are being emitted right now. So first off, head to the transmission shape and change it from a point to a sphere. Feel free to play with the radius here, but I decided to set mine to 5. Now already, it's starting to look a bit better. Next, head to the gravity tab and change the y value to 0. In our case, we don't really want gravity to affect these particles at all. Now, our explosion's looking pretty static, so let's fix that by changing the initial velocity property. Again, feel free to play around with this as much as you like. I think I'll set mine to 100 for now. Don't forget to add a bit of randomness as well, so that some of them move at slightly different speeds. After that, head to the Direction tab and change the spread from 45 to 180. Now our explosion is starting to actually take some shape, but we can still definitely improve it. I'm going to change the amount to 16, as I like a lot of particles in my explosions. I'm also going to make the particles a bit bigger by changing their scale to 2, and then adding a little randomness so that some are larger than others. Again, feel free to play with this until you get what you like. I'm also adding a scale curve that will shrink the particles down to zero over their lifetime to give them a disappearing effect. I'm also going to play around with their angle by adding some randomness and a scale that makes them rotate as they move. Now, this one's a little harder to see, but if I increase their lifetime a bit and zoom in, you can get a better look at it. I'm also going to increase the amount again here, I think, now that I've increased their overall lifetime a bit. Finally, I'm going to change their color from white to something a little bit more dynamic. I'm going to add a gradient that changes between a few different colors. I think I'll make the initial color a red. And then move the white to the middle. I'm also going to add a yellow here at the end, so it changes from red to white to yellow over its lifetime. 
I like the look of that, so I think I'll keep it. I think they're moving a bit slow now, so I'm going to tweak the velocity a bit so they're faster as well. Alright, that should do it. So let's go ahead and instance it into the main scene. I'm declaring a variable here that preloads the effect. And then here, when the button is pressed, I'm making another variable that creates an instance of the effect. I'm then going to add that instance to the scene, and then change its global position to be somewhere in the middle of the screen. You're definitely going to want to tweak this to fit your project, and you'll probably want it to be placed at the global position of the player or enemy, or really whatever you want the explosion to come from. I'm getting an error here, because I accidentally forgot to declare the effect variable. One thing I forgot to mention is that we need to delete the explosion once it's emitted once, otherwise it'll keep exploding over and over again. First, let's head back to the explosion scene and add a script. There really isn't a clear-cut signal for when the particle is emitted once, so we kind of have to do it our own way. To work around this, go ahead and add a timer to your scene, and then set the wait time to equal the lifetime of your particles, in my case, 2 seconds. Set the one-shot and auto-start to true as well, and connect the timeout signal to the particle script. Add the QFree function here, which will delete the scene once the explosion is emitted once. We also need to set the one-shot property to true in the ready function. As you can see, it's working perfectly now. Thanks for watching, and uh, subscribe for more Godot tutorials.